Hello, welcome to the Santa Cruz Zoo Foundation. My name is Natalie Gerardo Gonzalez. I am a veterinarian and animal training coordinator here at the foundation. At this moment we are in the enclosure of our Panamanian marmoset where we do operant conditioning, animal training, with positive reinforcement, we do not punish them but we do everything with their favorite food, with caresses, with games and so on. With him our training is based mostly on weighing and acceptance of oral medications, we are planning in the future the part of blood extraction, because being a wild animal and being such a small animal, they tend to have a lot of stress in a sedation and for this reason we must do all this through training to avoid a death in the animal. These animals tend to be very trafficked, because they are very small. People tend to buy them because they are small they can be kept as pets, then they grow up, get bored of them and end up voting them. Then they do not know how to survive in the environment. Besides it is illegal to have these species at home. Many are rescued from this traffic by regional authorities, which make an evaluation and decide if they are viable for a release or transferred to a zoo for conservation. With all our marmosets, here in the foundation and throughout the country we are generating projects, Marmoset Project, with Panamanian Marmoset, Grey Marmoset, Cotton Top Marmoset. Because for the same reason, they are trafficked that we are ending with the entire population of marmosets in the country and what is done with them is to get to reproduce them to release and repopulate again with marmosets. As I tell you, they are weighed, their favorite food is bananas, banana shakes are made, Bananas are also given to them, as such, they love sweet fruits. Their diet is based on a mixture of papaya, melon, banana, apple, a special cake that is made here with other nutritional components. They are given quail eggs and sometimes they are supplemented with calcium or other supplements. The individual we have here is a male, normally male Panamanian marmosets tend to have a crest, Females tend to be bald. We have only one individual because many die due to traffic with transfers and so on and there are few that reach foundations or zoos. All this training is done in order to perform checkups and medical examinations. Many times the anesthesia is harder on them than on a larger animal. Also with them we generate trust. With all animals we have to have trust for training and with them they tend to be more nervous and it tends to be a longer process for the whole process of training and trust with the individual, they tend to live in forests, their space always tends to be large, they are arboreal, they are primates, they sleep mostly in the trees. All the objects we have here are to try that they can demonstrate their natural behavior. So they can climb, they can climb they can hang on the ropes. Also as they are warm climate species each one has its heater. Because this is a very cold climate, it is a cloud forest, it is a very humid temperature, they have heaters in several places where they can lie down or decide where to sleep, where to stay as long as their time. All the furniture is always made knowing the natural history of each animal and an evaluation is always made of what things are good for the animal and what things are going to stress it movements, objects that may become. With them, normally when we are going to train a new behavior, we are going to do new things. We carry out a desensitization. We have two types of sensitization, passive and active sensitization. Passive sensitization is that we leave the object for them to touch it, smell it, observe it for several days, for example, the scale, we leave something similar to a scale, a platform or something so that they feel confident to get on it, the same thing we do with syringes, we keep the syringes close. To the individual whenever we come, 
without needles, obviously, so that the individual sees that the syringe is not going to hurt him, that he touches it, that he smells it every time he approaches the object, what we do is to reinforce with the preferred food, in this case banana, or a milkshake. He also receives oral medication. Also, first, he was sensitized with the syringe and began to receive the medication. First he began to receive milkshakes, things that he liked, sweet things and then he begins to receive medication when he needs it, when, for example, we need to supplement with something preventive for the cold in them. What we do the most is preventive medicine in all the animals we have here at the foundation. Preventive medicine is done so that later we are not worrying. Because the animal got sick, because it got an eye disease, a liver disease, a respiratory disease, so when there is super low weather, what we do is preventive medicine, however, if at some point they get sick, they allow nebulizations, they allow the application of medicines and they also allow wound healing, if they get a wound. By means of operative conditioning we take a swab with cream with antiseptics and we clean and handle it. We do not have more control over the wound, they tend to have prolonged fasts, if they have prolonged fasts they can get sick due to glycemia, glucose, they get low like a small child, then they have to be eating all day, many animals tend to be aggressive, they tend to show their natural behaviors, so you can never enter an enclosure without first knowing what are the things with which the animals can harm us, be it claws and teeth, and you always have to enter, well, knowing everything about the animal itself, about what things it had in the past, or things that were done to it, without experience you cannot approach any animal, without experience, in them the simple silky coat, they are small, many times when they have a skin disease the coat starts to fall off, they start to shed, depending on what it is, the same clinical management is done, we try to provide the perfect nutrition for them, so that this does not happen, the coat is always kept intact. It never loses weight, it always maintains an ideal weight. Monthly evaluations are made of weight, body condition, if they are very thin, why they are losing weight if they are losing weight, if they are gaining weight it is necessary to reduce the weight, if they are gaining weight, it is necessary to reduce the things they are eating and annual veterinary checkups are done, all the animals in the collection stop for annual veterinary checkups where blood samples are taken, endoscopies are done, ultrasounds are done and dental cleaning is done in many of our animals. In Colombia we have several species of marmosets, among them the Panamanian cotton top and gray marmosets and milk marmosets, all of them are threatened, all arboreal. They tend to live in the mountain ranges and the Amazon and forests. All their behavioral part is to express themselves in the best way and all of them tend to be victims of trafficking. They all have differences. A marmoset can have between 38 and 50 different vocalizations to communicate among them. Each vocalization means something, sometimes of confidence, sometimes of danger, many times of communication among themselves, if they feel calm and not feel calm, if they have to flee, if they can stay there and many times in the part of marmosets those that are dominant are the females. They tend to be the most dominant of the group and the alpha of the group in many groups. Females displace other females, many times the daughters themselves can displace the adults. But that does not happen with males. The problem that we have in the reproduction part, many times, is that there can be consanguinity, then consanguinity does not work much because they can be born with problems, they can die, they can be born premature and so on. All the enclosures are made with the specific needs for each animal. 
We have other enclosures for projects exclusively, in which we handle the issue of reproduction, which we will be talking about, and we handle the conservation part of each individual. Here at the foundation, each animal has behaviors that we all know, especially the caretaker and myself as the trainer. So there are behaviors that we know that when they do them, it is because they do not want us to approach them. Because they do not feel ready, they throw their ears back, they curl their tails, they feel scared and shy, they tend to be very expressive when they don't know, they all know their schedules, when they have not been given their food they start to vocalize, they get bad tempered, they tend not to train, they tend to be more bullies, to let us know they are hungry, many have favorite foods, they have bananas or cake as their favorite food, they love them, more than all primates, all our peanuts, banana and cake, are their favorites, however, all these diets are made by zoo technicians, and it should be noted that not everyone eats everything. Then many times that is why we ask not to feed the animals because not everyone is tolerant to each type of food. And well, this is the end for us with our Panamanian marmoset, thank you very much and I invite you to come to our foundation, to know all the animals, all the stories that all these animals have, there are more than 400 animals that you can observe here in the foundation in a beautiful way to enjoy nature and enjoy all the animals that we have here.